Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,236. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1,235 to 1,238 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have a column of numbers, and we need to count all the numbers that have an integer 4. Now, we should include 4, 4.25, 4.75, and all of these numbers. If we happen to have a number like 14, 14, we do not want to include that. So in essence, our criteria is going to be something like this, greater than or equal to 4 greater than and equal to four. less than 5. Now the way we're going to get less than 5 is we can say less than 4 plus 1. Now that's because we want to have a single input here so we can change it and instantly we get a count. For example, if I put a 2 here, I should be getting a count for a 2, a 2, and a 2, so 3. All right, so counting with two conditions sounds like the perfect job for the count ifs function. It has a criteria range, that's the whole range, and then a criteria. Notice it says 1, 1, so our first condition will highlight the entire range, comma, and the criteria. Well, I want to link it to the cell, so I'm going to put, oh, I can't just click on it because it would put the 4 in there, and I need the comparative operator before it. And guess what? The comparative operator has to be in double quotes. So double quotes greater than or equal to, and in Excel you have to put two operators like that, and double quote. Now this won't work. You can instantly see the formula is not working because that blue cell turned black. We need to join the comparative operator and the cell reference with our condition or criteria. You use the ampersand, the and symbol, shift seven. So that will work. You could actually highlight that whole constructed criteria and hit the F9 key to evaluate. And you'll see that, sure enough, it will evaluate to the correct comparative operator and number. Now I'm going to Control Z because I want to leave it connected to that cell, comma. And now the second criteria, notice it's a criteria range 2 and criteria 2. We highlight the same exact range, comma, in double quotes, less than, in double quotes, and join it to Shift 7, the whatever we type there, plus 1. Now, the way that Excel calculates formula, that math operator actually gets evaluated before the ampersand. So it will add and get 5. If we highlight this criteria 2 here and hit the F9 key, you can see, sure enough, we get the correct answer. Control Z, and that formula will work. Close parentheses. Control Enter, and we get a 6. If I change this up here to a 2, instantly I get a count of 3. Now, there is another way, and I'm sure there's actually many ways we can do this. Count ifs is almost always the fastest calculating method. The comparative operators sometimes get a little tricky, but usually that is count ifs is the best way to go. Now, if you actually didn't have Excel 2007 or later, which is kind of unlikely in this day and age, although some people still have 2003 and earlier. You couldn't use count ifs. So we'd, we'd have to construct a different type of formula. And I'm going to start off with the integer function. Now, the integer takes a number, and if I just close parentheses and highlight this in F9, it, you could see, oh, it just takes the integer. It actually always rounds down. So 2.6 becomes 2. 4 would become 4. 4.25 would become 4. Control Z. But check that out. We don't want just a single number. I'm going to highlight the entire column. Now, once you do this, that number argument there is expecting a single cell. I'm giving it a range of numbers. And actually, I already created a defined name here. So that range of cells is called numbers. But now if I highlight this, this is now going to do a what's called a function argument array operation because we threw a bunch of values into the number argument. Int is instructed to spit out a bunch of answers. So when I hit F9, there it is. Now Control-Z 
I want to ask the question, are any of you in that whole range that int is spitting out, are any of you equal to 4? Now if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, I get, oh, a bunch of trues and falses. Now this is an array operation. There's two array operations. There's a function argument array operation that's spitting out an array of answers. That's why it's called an array operation. Here is an operator equal sign. It's also speeding out an array of answers. We ultimately need to add all of the trues to get 1 and the falses to get 0. So I need to convert those trues and falses to 1s and zeros. I could do this a few ways. Any math operation can convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. I'm going to choose to do double negative. It tends to be the fastest calculating. Now right now, comparative operator evaluates after a math operation. So if I were to highlight this and hit the F9, it wouldn't work at all. So I need to force the equal sign to calculate first. So I have to put parentheses around here. And now when I highlight this in F9 to evaluate, I have exactly what I need. Control Z. Now that's an array operation. If I put it inside the SUM function, I'd have to use the special keystroke Control Shift Enter. But I don't want to do that because there's a function called SUM product. Now SUM product normally takes many arrays and multiplies them. That's the product part. And then adds them. That's the sum part. But we're taking advantage of the fact that the array arguments in sum product can handle array operations without any special keystroke. So it will not do the product part because there's not multiple arrays. It'll just do the sum part. And there you go. Control Enter. There's 6. If I change this to 3, there is 1. If I change it to 2, there is 3. So when we want to count how many of a particular whole number there is, we can use COUNTIFs with two conditions. Or we can use INT and SUM product, an equal sign, double negative, and a bunch of uh, actually three array operations. All right, we'll see you next video.